The session that we're recording today for Harman is a 5.1 recording and it's important to emphasize the difference between a 5.1 mix as opposed to a 5.1 recording. And what we have in the studio today is the drum kit set up in the traditional way but with additional microphone inputs which we can use to exploit the capabilities of 5.1. One of the main challenges that I've found is actually in the mixing of the tracks. Once we've recorded all the sources it sounds pretty good in the control room but what you've got to do is work out a way of how that translates into the car. Now all the time going right back to the 50s and 60s when producers mixed their recordings they were always aware of how their recordings would translate onto AM radio as it was at the time and also AM radio in a car, two slightly different environments. One of the advantages of AM radio in a car is you've got a fixed environment. Producers even back then would listen to their mixes on very small speakers that had a sort of quasi radio sound to them to get some sense of what was available. But more interesting, towards the end of the 60s, early 70s, when in America you were allowed to have shortwave uh, FM transmitters, often studios would have a small transmitter in the control room and they could park a car in the parking lot, as they would call it in America, and tune the car radio in and so they could hear the mix in real time in the speaker. As we move forward to these really high fidelity reproduction systems in, in modern cars, some of those problems go away because you've got much better speakers, but also the listening environment is, is still fairly similar. You're in a car, it's a fixed environment, you've got the soft furnishings of a car, you've got the glass, all of those have a massive impact on the way that you hear the sound. So in the Logic 7 systems, the whole system is based on what the car environment is, is about and compensation is made to make the listening environment as good as possible. So we have to make sure that the material we're supplying fits into that really well. It's almost a new challenge because we're now mixing for an environment that's for the future, not what's gone before. So to provide the right demo material, and by demo I don't mean a demo song, I mean demonstration material, it's really important to choose the right project. Now, a band like Patch William have a very uncolored sound. It's a very natural approach. So unlike maybe a dance record where there's a lot of synthesizers and a lot of synthetic elements, I think capturing a band in its natural environment helps to show the dynamic range that's available even in the car. So from the control room that we're listening to, where we have immense dynamic range, trying to capture all the nuances of the performance, those sorts of things can be revealed in the car later on and I think the choice of material is incredibly important. If you have something as I said like a dance record it's probably less able to reveal the subtleties and that's what we're going for to, so that people can really appreciate how good the quality is both in terms of the surround and also the dynamic range. But what's more exciting is for the journalists and all of the invited guests to hear a band play live in the studio because it's an experience that very few people actually have the majority of people see a band live and that's a really different environment to seeing them live in a recording studio listening on great monitors. So I think what is, what is very exciting is to come in, hear the band in the recording studio, we do a, a rough mix there and then and then take that disc and listen to it in the car while it's still fresh in your ears as it were. You've got a sense of what you just heard live, how does that actually work in the car and, and that's probably almost the, it's almost like wine tasting, it's the best possible link between I've just heard it live, now I'm hearing it in the car.
there's nothing inside He's an empty heart He fills it with hearts He fills it with hearts What's really interesting from a record production point of view is that Harmon is involved from the microphone end with, say, AKG, for example, all the way through to what you're listening to in the car. So it's almost a complete food chain of audio from the very beginning to the very, very end. In the car, it, it really did um, come alive in a way that it had done in, in, this, in the uh, control room. It, it, it's so much better than you expect it to be in a car environment because of all the compromises. You think, well, they can't sound this good, but somehow it manages to. It's without doubt the, the best in-car experience I've, he I've, I've heard, uh, and I've heard some that make your eyeballs vibrate. And uh, but no, in terms of clarity and, and reproduction, it's fantastic. But it was interesting the way the way it's been mixed for the car using that surround sound ability, that you are hearing a a full concert experience. You're not just hearing sources. And, uh, and that was very pronounced and, and uh, very good to hear. There's elements to it which you wouldn't expect, you, which you Such aren't ready for. Um, just that being in the sound, in the experience thing, yeah. where it's, uh, it's, it's not just a stereo mix, there's so much more going on that you're, you're consciously aware of and you're you are unconsciously aware of until you start listening for them. You say, oh, well, that's clever. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's not the, the, the entire control room experience. I mean, with the car, one thing I noticed is when you switch, turn the Logic 7 off, it seemed, it seemed to come from a source, whereas when you turned it on, it was like being in the room with a band where the sound's coming from all directions because of mm. the volume and the, and the reflections and everything. And particularly also the low end as well, isn't yeah. it? That's the thing that we work really hard on to try and get that to translate because that's always a problem, and I think that that really does capture it incredibly well or, yeah. or plays it back really well. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm really proud of what I've done, and I've listened to it a lot. So, like all those things, you get phased. I know it sounds really good, but it's refreshing to hear someone that hasn't ha got the baggage of the session to go, "Oh, that's really good." So that's really nice. I'm I'm really pleased, and I th and I hope that everyone else that isn't even a music journalist, that's just a, c a consumer, a car driver that knows nothing about anything, doesn't care. They just enjoy great music. They don't want to know about this. They just go, "Wow, that's good. That's all I want."